not really anything. Speak, speaking of uh, of going down rabbit holes and spending a lot of time and stuff, you guys just finished an album. So, uh, so anybody who's watching who has no idea who this person is, uh, your name is Misha Mansour. You play in the band Periphery, and you guys just finished an album. How does that feel? <sighs> this one was a tough one, man. It took a while. Yeah. It took a while to get this one together. Has it ever been a labor of love to get an album together for you? Every single one is every like single one. The most like, I I I'm I'm. I know I'm talking to somebody who does exactly the same thing, but it's just, well, because we'll demo stuff and then we'll demo it again and then we'll demo it again and then we'll do a final demo, and, and, and you know, and I do all the all the engineering for that kind of stuff, so I'm I'm hearing and recording the song, you know, 40, 50 times. It's just like over tweaking riffs, trying to get. It's just every single one, even it, just right up until the day of recording guitar, uh, I'm doing it. So. Yeah, yeah, we we tweak stuff. As we're reamping, yeah, <laughs> like oh yeah, it's yeah. like it's a it's a it's a disease, but um, I don't know if it's the same for you, but I feel like as you, I mean, you you play a very specific style of music, you know, Archspire is its own genre as far as I'm concerned. Like it's mm. it's there's Bad. nothing there's nothing <laughs> quite like it. There's a lot of tech death, tech whatever. I mean, I don't. Do you identify as tech death? We identify as extreme technical death metal, and it's uh, it's the gimmick that's our that our band is based around. It's yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. but you've also sort of pioneered the sound because uh, I like your band a lot, and and oh, if I want to listen to Arch Spire, there's no other band that I can listen to that sort of. Yeah, I I have heard that before, I've heard that before, and and I, I'm only repeating what people say because when I listen to the band, it's a totally obviously a totally different experience. Right. I think about every small riff i don't hear you'll never hear it the way that i hear it which is just something you'll have to you know we just have to accept as as artists you know yeah when when people say oh when i hear our i i I started maybe they didn't like the band at first and then they got into it and they started listening to it more i've heard a lot of people be like where is another band like this and and comments would be like there isn't just because of and that's not because we're so good. It's, not, it, it's it's really because we focused on only one thing for like almost 15 years. <laughs> only one thing. Just absolutely laser focused on this one thing. Not that any of us are educated. Well, our bass player, Jared, is educated. He has a, a jazz degree, and I always make fun of him as we're <laughs> carrying big amps upstairs. I'm like, hey, where's your fucking degree now? Like, you, know, you know what I mean? Yeah, so... Um, it's like we spend all of our time, if there's like a big circle of music and, and the, the circle is sort of expanding, just like they talk, talk about like academia, it's like they have this circle of expanding knowledge. And if you do your thesis and you do like your doctorate on something, it bumps a little edge of just one part of the circle out a little bit, just because it's some field that nobody has really studied. It's just all we've ever done is just this one thing. So yeah. we're just constantly going in this one direction. Um, well, with that, do you find that like... As time goes on, because it's just a specific thing that you're doing, um, you know, it's 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 if you're tough on yourself and if you're if you're sort of aware, like, well, I don't want to just write the same song over and over, that like it becomes tougher and tougher to have stuff pass as as you and yeah. stuff that will make the cut for an album as you go on. Like it yes. might have been easier in the past when you were discovering what your sound was, but now that you've sort of established it, it. Uh, it it's it's really tough for things to pass muster for for something to feel like oh we are we aren't just retreading some ground that we've we've already yeah. covered and and why do why are we really doing it again are we doing it because we have to put out a new album and it needs to have songs on it uh, right. I don't know if that's relatable to you but that's very much why our album took as long as it did is because like at the end of the day. The band is really just a passion project for me. So I have to feel happy with, with the music we're putting out, and so does everybody else in the band. That's the only reason to do it. There's no mm. reason to put out something that we're like, eh, I'm 90% good on it, but, you know. Um, yeah. So so getting to that. that point took a lot of time. <laughs> I don't I know that. if that's relatable or not, but it's just like that's what I feel like a lot of the sort of war of attrition is with the, uh, with the album is just sort of just... It's going, going, going until eventually you end up with a collection of songs that you're like, all right, like we're we're doing something that I can actually be proud of putting out and not feeling like we've already done this before. But it's not even about being original. It's just about a person, a very personal feeling of like, like you said, the bump in the circle, like, well, we're occupying that. But 
in a way that I'm happy with and not in a way where I'm just like, well, this is just the same thing as the last time, isn't it? You know? It's, it's weird when you're writing music, especially with other people, when someone plays something and you either like it or don't like it, there's a reason why, but you have no idea how to quantify that reason. You're like, ah, it's something about, ah, I don't know. And, and you start putting all these like, re well, it's too obvious or it's too stupid or, or it's, uh, it's not complex enough or something. But these are kind of just ways to describe your like emotion about that thing that you heard. And the emotion that you're getting is probably, I think, based in what you loved when you were younger and what things formed your idea of what good music is. So in a lot of ways, we're all trying to write, at least me, we're all trying to write really good Limp Bizkit riffs. Because, <laughs> because when I was younger, uh, I was really into new metal, right? So as I got older, I liked more and more different kinds of music, you know, dream theater, all this kind of stuff, and more technical stuff, necrophagist. Uh, but I think the stuff that really hooks you when you're younger about music and when you first start playing, that's the stuff that sort of, it, it like, it stays with you. And, and then, like, I'm always trying to we're trying to write music and, and, and this and this riff is really cool because it reminds me of a Pantera riff that I loved when I was 14 or something like that. But I won't necessarily make the connection because it's like so far back in my brain. I don't know if you agree. It's it's interesting. I think they've actually like I've read something. I don't know how official this study is, but the, the music that you listen to specifically when you're around 14 is very right. influential as far as like how it will shape your tastes. Okay, so what what did you what did you listen to when you were fourteen then? I was listening to a lot of like well like then it was like a, a lot of, of new metal, but also like Slipknot, you know, Deftones, Tool, Incubus, stuff like that. Dream I was getting into Dream Theater. I hadn't discovered Mashuga yet, but mm. you know that 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 obviously changed everything for me. That was around the time I was uh, eighteen. I think I was a late bloomer, so maybe it's eighteen for me. But like ultimately, that stuff defines what you what resonates with you, right? I, I think at the end of the day, what makes it so interesting is that we're, we're almost trying to like objectively quantify subjective ab abstractions, right? Yeah. And, and, and you're, you're trying to find a word and that word makes perfect sense for you. Th that's, that's the difficulty. It's like, you're, you're, you're talking about these abstractions as if everyone should know right. why that's sick. And it feels so so just completely genuine to you and it evokes such a reaction that you're like surely everyone must hear it this way or right. must feel this way when they hear that thing and like most people in in actuality would be like I, yeah i don't care you know that yeah. does literally nothing for me so yeah so i don't know and i i tend to feel these things very intensely you know i, I tend to be very opinionated about these things or just have a strong reaction so that i, I think it's all those things sort of just operating next to each other all those little little aspects that that just make this so complicated to explain and it's all we're, we're trying to relate it in the best way possible that we can with language but we'll never really get there you do yeah. the same thing with guitar you know like well that's a warm tone like what does that even right. mean like yeah. you think you know what that means and i think i know what that means i like, guess that warm yeah. vintage tone it could mean two completely different things sure. but it's all just how we're reacting to it it probably very similarly there was like some warm tone we heard when we were 14 that we were like right wow that that that's the sound, you know, like yeah. how do you get that sound? Yeah. So, so it's, it's always interesting talking to, to musicians who've sort of gone through the exact same experience, but with different, uh, in, you know, different, uh, uh, elements of the, the, uh, equation and seeing what the output is, you know? Right. Um, cause yeah. you and I, I think we have like a lot of similar influences and yet we write very, very different music. And I, I definitely yes. appreciate your music a lot, but I, can't really write stuff like that. I spoke with with your buddy Mark, and he was telling me that he was uh, he was listening to some Archbyron in in, uh, in hopes to get some inspiration for some Haunted Shores riff. And it was funny as I listened to Haunted Shores, and I go, "How in the fuck could anyone write this? This is crazy!" And and it's so it's so differently crazy than than my band. It's like so. I, I like I mean this in the best way. I feel like Haunted Shores is. This video is brought to you by Sheet Happens, where you can get guitar and bass tablature books edited and approved by the artists themselves. Choose from their wide selection, including bands like Revocation, Periphery, Intervals, 
and more. If you are interested in learning awesome music, head over to sheethappenspublishing.com and use code word DEAN for 15% off. That's code word DEAN for 15% off. Like, I mean this in the best way. I feel like Haunted Chores is a band's, it's a band's band. It's a musician's No, it, to it to totally yeah. is. Even by yeah. design it is, you know? It's not supposed right. to be played okay. live. It's not a serious thing. It's literally a thing where it's like, Matt, our drummer, really hates playing blast beats. And he'll do it if there's, like, purpose, you oh, know? okay. But it's, you know, he's a groove guy and he, he doesn't even really like playing fast or anything like that. So there's this there's this itch that needs to be scratched. So if we're not even going to play with a real drum, we're going to program anything. Let's just go for it. Just go crazy. But but I mean, yeah. your music just sounds like 10 orders of magnitude more insane. So like it, it, like I think. I think, and I probably was listening to some Archspire for inspiration, but inspiration is a very loose term or it's maybe misunderstood because it's not like, I'm like, oh, I want to get like a, a vibe like that or get a riff like that. But it's more like, I want to get pumped up. Like what it was right. doing was pumping me up and like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Now I want to write rather than like, I want to like, you know, rip this off like my band rips off my sugar um right. you know <laughs> it, sure. it, it was maybe a little bit less direct uh than that but but it was really like pumping us up we were listening to a lot of stuff like that like sort of extreme death right. tech death uh you know black and death metal all that stuff just for inspiration to put right. us in the mood of like okay this is when we write this is the direction we'll go in next as opposed mm -hmm. to something else because now we're like kind of fired up well, that's that's sweet. So I uh, talk, talking about inspiration and like trying to to write riffs. Um, so you have you have a company called uh, it's Horizon Devices, the company, correct? Yep. And you guys do pedals and strings. Mm -hmm. Do you anything else? Just those two, mainly those two things, right? No, it's just basically pedals and strings for now. Okay. We may expand okay, into other stuff, but that's okay. uh, that's what we do right now. So recently, I worked with some of the guys at Horizon Devices to come up with my own set of custom strings, and they should be out. Now, uh, so the description, read the description. I, I have a, a custom set of strings. It's based on exactly what I love to play. And then some half gauges uh, on the low end that I've never been able to try before. And luckily, uh, the guys at Horizon Devices were, were able to get those to me so I could try out. I have like a, a, a drawer full of custom strings that I was like going back and forth with. And, and I really love the feel of this, um, the set that we came up with. So the way that I picked it was I picked my like the set I've been playing for as long as I've been playing an eight string, um, sort of the uh, uh, 10 to 46 uh, standard six string, which I love the feel of on a 27 inch scale. And then we went with a 59 and a half and a 74 and a half to get just a little bit more pushback on the low strings, get a little bit more tightness there. So I built that set, I love it um, and you can, and you can check that out now. Now, Misha, you have your own set, yep. and you have a couple sets on there. Do you have an eight string and a few other ones? I think. Yeah, I basically have my my uh, seven the six six string, which is like my drop C tuning on okay. a uh, twenty five and a half inch scale. The seven string, which is drop A flat on a twenty six and a half uh, inch scale, and my eight string, which is a twenty seven inch scale, which is uh, F was F sharp standard, just standard tuning. Right. Um, and those are the gauges that I picked and, and we got kind of granular with them, but it's, again, it's a very personal thing. It's how you play. It's the feel you want. Uh, I needed something that would work like kind of just as well live as it would in the studio where right. I sort of need two different things. Cause I find like live, I have the adrenaline going. So strings always feel a little bit lighter in the studio. I could get away with lighter mm -hmm. gauges. So there was, okay. there, there was some, when, when you have the adrenaline going and like, we like to move around and be silly on stage. And it's just sometimes like, like the gauges can feel an entire gauge lighter than, than they do just cause the adrenaline sort of covering for it, you know? Huh. Yeah, um, I never really thought about that. Yeah. I, I, so it's interesting. I'll actually run higher action live, um, which increases wow. the tension a little bit. And also I found I was just bottoming out on like palm mutes and things like that. I was just playing, I play a lot harder live, you know? Right. Um, do, do you find that that affects your um, endurance? Um, you know, my girlfriend hasn't complained, but you know, now I'm just joking. Uh, I think oh, I'm looking for a rim shot. Uh, yeah, <laughs> no, no, not that one. Okay. Two yeah, drums yeah. and a cymbal <laughs> fall off a cliff. But like, um, yeah, I think I think like it's 
I think it just is what it is, you know? Like, I, I've never yeah. really noticed... Because, again, it's 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 reacting to the adrenaline. Like, when I was playing sort of lighter gauges or my studio gauges live, I was just like, God, this feels like rubber bands. I'm bottoming mm. out. The frets are buzzing. Like, it was just like... It was very hard to get tone out of it. I felt like I was just fighting the guitar. And then right. raising the action and getting slightly uh, thicker gauges fixed that. And I was able to dig in and have a good time. Um, the first few days of tour are always the hardest, which may be the same for you too, but like neck and back are destroyed, leg, you know, from stance is destroyed. And the, th the yes. other thing that happens, and like this kind of happened because I was, uh, we, we did a music video the other day, was it's like this part of my finger here will just start bleeding and this oh, might yeah. too. Yeah. Um, and uh and just bleed all over the guitar which is so metal <laughs> but like but then eventually that like the first few days are rough because you keep reopening that and then like after that it just hardens up and, and calluses up but it's been like three years since i've had to play hard so like wow. you know skin's all soft again but you build that nice. up um but yeah like other once 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 you're there i haven't had any real issues with that i don't find that it that it's been an issue i think it's just the adrenaline covering for everything I, I have one big question when it comes to strings, uh, and I'm, I'm interested to see what your answer is. Because when I was younger, I picked a certain set of strings, and I thought, that felt good. This feels good. I'm going to buy that one all the time. And honestly, I've been buying that set of strings since I was, you know, however old. Like, I mean, for years and years and years. Yeah. Um, and that definitely affected my style as a guitarist. Like, it, how could it not? My vibrato sounds different. Right. Um, the types of riffs that I play and write are different because I'm used to this certain feel. My my technique is very specific because you know if I'm doing fast economy pick runs, I need a certain tension uh, based on how I've developed my technique, or, and that changes how I write stuff, and that changes how I play. So, so when when you and I uh, choose our uh, set of strings, it I feel like it really affects who we are as a guitarist. Here's a really good example. Brandon Ellis, uh, Black Dahlia Murder, insane, amazing guitar player. His vibrato is so wide. Yeah, he's controlled. not that good. Oh, you know what? Actually, never mind. I was thinking <laughs> I was just, something else. I was uh, just joking. I actually, something? I shouldn't be talking shit because I don't know him, and he might, he might think I'm being serious. I don't know him personally, but that dude is fucking insane. And he's yes, his vibrato. Best. If everyone in the world just needs to copy his vibrato, and then the world would be a better place. Well, the thing is about his vibrato is, I bet you that. So much of it is just, I mean, we don't. I don't want to be like gear, 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 but it's like you develop your style based on the gear that you have. Yep. And if you are playing in, I think he plays in D standard, a little bit looser, probably. A, I don't know if thinner strings. It's affected his playing so much that now he's got this tool of a guitar with the exact strings that he that he needs to execute these insane, awesome runs and vibrato. And if you change it, he's still incredible. But what developed his style is the strings in yeah. a lot of ways. I don't know if you agree. Yeah, no, I think I think everything affects that, right? So like you have to, you, it'll it'll be it'll be a bit of a chicken or the egg situation, right? So you have your setup and you're gonna it'll build you around it, but then also you can hone in and optimize based off of you know whatever setup you're using. You might find a, a tuning or a set of gauges or whatever. You'd be like, this allows me to develop that even more. Um, for example, right, I always have trouble getting comfortable on a guitar that's got like a wound third string. And like a big thing is like I'm usually trying to get some vibrato off that third string, but I found with a wound third string it just feels different, right? right. Or even longer scales can affect that, can affect the feel. Like you have to give it a lot more on a longer sure. scale to get that same amount of bend. So... Um, yeah, no, I think I think that these things can, can greatly affect it. I mean, it's one of the things that... It's one of the reasons why I wanted to sort of tackle strings because we will obsess over every piece of gear and every you know the wood the pickups the scale length all these things you'll be changing like the preamp tubes in your amp to get a slight difference right. but but like you said like, it's a very similar experience for me where it's just like you find a set of strings that you like and you just accept for me it wasn't even that i liked it was like oh like john petrucci uses this so i guess that's sure. what i should use right and sure. there wasn't any real thought as to like why those are the gauges I'm using. And then maybe I tune them down. I'm like, oh, cool. That actually feels a little better. Um, but maybe it's looser on the bottom. But there was something where I liked it. And it's like you, you kind of realize these things, but it's still never quite right. And when it came time to like doing my own set, I was like, no one's really kind of nailed at least what I want. And I think a large part of it is that 
you know, you and I, we play in, in alternate tunings and lower tunings mm -hmm. that are not what, let's say, most guitarists play in. And I think most most likely the the people who put these sets together for lower tuning seven string guitars they were doing it based off some approximation maybe a tension calculator or maybe just sort of logically like oh it must be this or must be that but i i can almost guarantee you that none of the people who designed these sets actually had the responsibility of playing these sets live or playing them in any capacity beyond just initial testing whereas you and i that's kind of all we do so that's when i realized like oh my god this instrument could feel a lot better and it's not the guitar it's not the setup it's literally just get the strings that you like on it um so that's one thing that i tried to do with my with my strings was i was like hey i bet if you play in these tunings or anything close to it you will really, really like these gauges because these are gauges that I picked for myself to use all the time, right, you know? Right. And then now when I go back to a regular set, it feels sort of imbalanced. And you're just like, oh, right. like yes. this yep. one string's a lot tighter. Why why is this one string tighter? Like doesn't make sense, right? And yeah. and then the other the other mistake that people make is they think like, oh, everything should be the same tension, but that's completely incorrect. Because right. The lower strings could be a little bit more loose, like, but you want you want your 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 instrument to have this sort of linear feeling. You don't want it to be sort of linear and then oh, like for no reason the third string's really tense, you know, or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I just feel like a lot of this stuff wasn't necessarily thought about carefully. And then also every string construction's a little different, so it'll react differently based off the construction, based off the material, whatever, the core to wind ratio, things like that, like will affect not just the sound, but the feel and like how they bend. Like there's certain strings are actually rougher on your fingers. There's certain ones are smoother. So all these things will affect how you feel about your guitar, but this is what you're interacting with. When you're playing guitar, when we're all playing guitar, like that is the, that is the thing that we're interacting with. So I know I'm ranting a lot about strings, but like we did go down the rabbit hole cause it's like kind of one of those obvious things. Like I love cars and like the, the biggest analogy to that is tires. Like tires make such a big difference on a car, but people really don't pay attention to them. Like one of the biggest right. mods you can make to a car is like adjust your tire pressures to be appropriate. It makes all the difference in the world, but people would rather spend thousands of dollars on this or that or that to try to get performance. Strings are kind of the same thing. It's not like the sexiest thing to talk about, but if you're good, if you want your guitar to play a little better, get the right string gauges for your tuning, your scale length and, and you know, your play style that could really upgrade your instrument and you'd only have to spend, you know, 10 bucks, you know, <laughs> like, right. You said it's not the sexiest thing, but is it weird that I'm turned on right now for some reason? Well, that's just my voice and that's how that oh, works. Oh, it's your so voice. Don't, okay. don't, don't <laughs> okay. conflate was, the two. I but, was wondering what it was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it happens a lot. Don't worry. Um, okay. So one last thing before we're done. Uh,